Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Call the Damn Leads, the show by sales professionals for sales professionals. I'm your host, Drewby Wilson. With more than two decades in sales, I have seen it, been through it, lived it, experienced it, lived to tell a few stories. And now I'm bringing this show to you, to my friends and family in the sales community. And more importantly, I'm bringing all the crazy sales stories to light. We're bringing them out. We're talking about them. And we're bringing a little tactic to the back end to make sure that anyone's in sales is really continuing to learn and grow and understand that you are not alone on this journey because let's be honest, sales is the greatest industry in the world. It gives you an opportunity to become and create the life that you ultimately desire. And today's guest is a great example of that someone I had the pleasure of meeting just, I mean, we met. A little over a year ago, but I met in person for the first time just about a month ago. And this young man's story really hit close to home. Him telling me on the journey to pick up energy drinks at the gas station of his upbringing and what he has gone through and dealt with to be where he is. Man, am I just freaking excited to have the real young closer in the house, my friend, Mr. Jacob Hagerman. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Hey, number one, thank you for having me on. Really appreciate it. And dude, let's just. Let's just get it, baby. This is this is what Come we Come on, for. baby. That's what we're here for. That's why I love you so much because we are in the game of sales and you are someone who epitomizes the go-getter hustle mentality and also about serving and being there for your people, man. So let's get right into it. How did you get started in sales? What was your uh, what got you cut into the game? So I'll, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. So like I, I was raised poor. I mean, a lot of like the underdog stories that tons of people have. I mean, it's not something that's uncommon for the people that get into sales is that they're looking for a way out. But grew up poor, moved to, from Indiana to Arkansas after a whole crazy deal. We won't get you know too sad or anything like that. But moved to Arkansas, restarted life, went to high school. Like all I wanted to do was just get out of high school, go to college, go be a lawyer and go make some like blue collar money you know, or some white collar money. And so ultimately I was supposed to, supposed to go to the university of Arkansas, Fayetteville. And I uh, was four weeks away from checking in the dorms. And my mom calls me. He's like, Hey, can't pay the mortgage. So unenrolled from college. And I got onto indeed. And I found the very first place that I can find a sales job. Cause I knew sales guys make quick money. And that's how I stumbled into the car business at 18 years old and then made my first commission check. And it was wraps. <laughs> <laughs> it was wraps. Well, and you know, what's exciting for me is, again, knowing you personally, there's going to be a book written and it's going to tell that story. It's going to talk about what you had to go through and some of the stories you shared with me on our our journey. And man, I know that's going to hit home, especially for a lot of the young, you know, individuals listen to this, the sales guys that are out there, early 20s like yourself, just really, um, you know, in the grind and in the hustle and maybe coming from a very similar background of not having a whole lot. You know, I personally was raised by my mom. I have brothers, so I understand what it means to have that that camaraderie with your mom. I should I got mom tattooed on my neck for crying out loud. Uh, yeah. So I know what it is to to go all in like that. And and so Jacob, you know, you, you you're an amazing human. You've gone all in on sales. You've been in the game since 18, man. Let's hear a crazy ass sales story. So I think one of my favorite sales stories, okay? So it was actually at the beginning of this year. And so Andy, you know, Andy, you know, Andy Elliott, that's who I work for, for everybody out there who wondering, Andy's a very passionate and driven individual. So we're, we're in the middle of a sales meeting and Andy's just lighting everybody up, firing us up. And he's like, listen, the only thing that's stopping you is your own self. You just got to get delusional, become delusional. And he's just yelling at us, like, just get delusional, make the big ask, make the big offer. And so I have never traveled the country, did like in-store trainings or anything like that at all. And so we just got back from Brian Benstock's dealership. And this guy is the number one Honda Acura dealer in the entire world. This guy's like Andy Elliott, but like 20 years in the future, even crazier. Like this guy is the cream of the crop of the automotive space. So me and big Rai, you know, six foot six, 300 pound Goliath, you know, we're sitting there. We're like, how can we get delusional today? And so we're like, well, we've got Benstock's Instagram. So we try to FaceTime Benstock on Instagram. We couldn't get a hold of him. We called him like four times back to back to back. And then we called Marat, his variable ops director. 
And next thing you know is he picks up the phone and we're like, hey, we want to come down. We want to come do a training. And me and him have never done a training before ever, like in store, nothing. So Marat's like, okay, cool. I like the idea. I like the idea. I'll get back to you. Gets back to us. He's like, all right, I want three days. I want three days back to back eight hour days. <laughs> we, we lock up the deal and, uh, you know, we get flights and hotels and we're on our way over from Arizona to New York. And I mean, that's, that's like a five and a half, six hour flight. And we're sitting there the entire time going, we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> like we've never done this <laughs> just straight into the fire. One of the top dealerships, like Tim Grover has spoke there, you know, Jordan Belfort has spoke there. Grant Cardone has Come spoke on. there. Like some of the most influential people ever have spoke there and have trained there. And me and Ryan are like, dude, I'm 22 at the time. Ryan's, you know, 25 at the time. And we're like, we have no idea what we're doing. So we land, we get there. Happy to say that, dude, we killed it. Like, like straight up tossing a grenade in a room, slaughtered it. And I went and talked to Ben Stock and he was like, hey, that was one of the most like intricate hands-on trainings I've ever been a part of. You know, you've topped a couple of other people that we've had out here. Not going to say any names, but come on. I remember it just... We, 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 we got back home and it, it was like, you know, like how like you like you're shaking and stuff like that. Like when you, when you get done with day one, it was eight hours, three days in a row, back to back to back. We get home and Andy was like, how'd it go? <laughs> and I was like, dude, I have no idea. I was like, we might never talk to them again or they might call and ask us back out. Two weeks later, he, Marat calls us. He's like, hey, I want the boys to come out. We went a total of five times back to New York after that one time, but we got delusional. We were sitting on the plane and I'm literally shaking and, you know, big Ryan, he's the comedic relief. And I was doing all the training and I'm just sitting there. And I'm like, dude, I am, I'm 22 years old and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to say to these people. And it was just big back up against the wall. And, uh, I did all shit in bricks <laughs> the whole day. I was like, oh, my God, I have no idea how to do this. And so it was like three Andy Elliott seminars back to back to back. And that was my introduction into live training. Hey, you know, sometimes you just got to get thrown into the fire, baby. That's what honestly, in my journey of sales and, and leading rooms, I know that feeling so well. I remember being 19 and selling insurance and being one of the top guys in my market and then being like, hey, Drewby, we'd like you to come and speak to this you know, a uh, conference of agents, they've all got 10 to 25 years in the business. All of them run an agency of at least three to four people and you outproduce them by yourself. Can you come and talk to them and tell them what you do? And I like walked in there covered in tattoos with my little all state polo and was like, <laughs> well, let me tell you about the things that I do. And these motherfuckers were just oh. looking at me like, what in the world? <laughs> And uh, I also had no idea what I was doing. I was like, what? I don't know what I do that's different. I like, you guys told me to do the thing at training. So I just do the thing you tell me to do. Imagine yeah. that. Like, <laughs> oh, God. That's so sweet, Dude, bro. It's... And I, I can imagine you just being like, all right, let's go. We're in, boys. Game on. Let's get after it. Fucking go. <laughs> oh, dude, the craziest thing is like, so it's, it's mandatory. Everybody wears suits in this dealership. Like you're wearing a black suit, gray suit, or uh, um, or just like a light or dark blue suit. White shirts only. And so, like, mm. every single person is suit and tied in this place. Like, it's, it looks like it's, it's, like, super well done operation. And I'm sitting in there. And the, the best part of it all is Marat comes up to me. And he goes, if a couple of my guys don't quit, when you get done, you'll never come back. And I was like, okay, cool. Right before training starts. So, very first class, I go through introduction. And I go, okay, who's here? Who's here ready to learn something? All the hands go up. And I go, great. Everybody line up against the wall. And so I line up the entire room. I mean, it's like 50 people in the room because there's like 150 people I got to train throughout the day. 50, 50, 50 in these three classes. Mm -hmm. Literally the first way they, they were exposed to me was I put them all up against the wall, lined them up, and I just rattled them with objections of automotive. And it's like, all right, no, you don't know what you're saying. Rattle them. You don't know what you're saying. Rattle them. You don't know what you're saying. Just all 50 people. And I was like, hey, raise your hand if you thought that you were better than what you really are. And did all the hands go up? And I was like, dude, let's go. It was, it was the on. only way that I could, it was the only way that I could think. I was like, oh, dude, I'm 22 years old. Like, these guys are going to look at me like, what can this kid teach me? And then afterwards, dude, it was raps. Everybody was like, hey, you know what? Like, we got something to learn. And so, very, very thankful for that opportunity. But, dude, I was scared shitless getting on that plane. Me and Ryan just, dude, what are we going to do? 
<laughs> you know what though? But that is a, that is such a great story to talk about the power of mindset, especially in sales. One of the things that I know I've personally experienced is when you're new, whether you're new in sales in general, or maybe you're in a new product or a new offer. I mean, shit, you can have 10 years in sales, but if you get a new product or a new offer and you guys are trying to figure it out, like it can be a little scary to print. It can be like, Hey man, we're going to throw out a hundred thousand dollar offer for the first time. Like, let's see what happens. We're going to put out a million dollar offer and see what you don't know until you know. Yeah. The big lesson that I took from it though, is like, you don't know what's out there until you ask for it. Come on. Like, like if, 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 if you're never going to ask for it, they'll never know if you can get it. And so like, I figured out, you know, like the value, you know, like what's, it, it's crazy. Like I'll, I'll say this, you know, dealerships, they'll pay 25, 30 grand, you know, for me and Ryan to go spend two days with them. And I'm like, dude, at 22, 23 years old, like that's crazy. And then immediately afterwards, you know, from January, February, March, April, May, I think out of that time frame, I spent a total of like 18 days in Arizona. The rest was airports, hotels, or in conference rooms doing trainings. And so like once, once my feet, you know, hit the water, dude, I was like, all right, let's just, let's just go for a swim. Let's get really good at this game. And like for me personally, like I was terrified of public speaking was like the last thing in the world I wanted to do was have a mic and like be talking to people. Cause I'm like, what do I have to teach these people? Like I'm 22, 23 years old. Like there's nothing of value that I can say to anybody. And then I realized that when you get around the right environment, your learning curve is so much faster that most people, they're like, it's very small. And like when you get around the right community, it's exponential and being able to push that back out into people was probably one of the one of the most things I'm grateful for in 23 was getting over the fear of speaking and figuring out that if you're not going to ask for it, you'll never get it and you'll never know and you'll die with a regret. And that's why graveyards are the richest places in the world. True. That's gonna make a hell of a clip, sir. That's gonna make a hell of a Ooh. clip. No, just, uh, I, <laughs> just bringing the heat. I knew you would. That's why I was so excited to have you come on. And and really, what I, I'm excited to know is, you know, I'm 36, so I don't necessarily resonate with some of the younger generation and the and the new sales professionals. And I was kind of one of those guys that came up in the time where it was like, hey man, if you're young, you listen to the old heads because they're the ones that give you the most game. And I always was a little stubborn and was like, I mean, what the fuck is going to teach me, man? I don't listen to you cats. I ain't got this <laughs> shit, right? Uh, and, and it, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, and school's expensive, man. I'd look back on all that advice that I let flow in one ear and out the other. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm realizing, shit, holy moly. But a guy like you, you're, you know, early 20s. You're out there killing the game. You, you came up not having a whole lot, so you've really had to learn and put in the work to figure this out and continue to develop and grow. And, and man, I know you guys don't just show up sometimes. You show up all the time, every time. Mandatory. Mandatory, bro. And so one of the things I always like to ask on this, when it comes to sales specifically, if you had to pick one thing about you or one skill that you would consider like your sales superpower, what would it be? Man, it for me, it would just be showing up intentionally with that like white belt mentality because I am 23. Like there is a lot of life experience out there that I don't have. Like I can't coach somebody on going through a divorce. I can't coach somebody on going bankrupt or I can't coach somebody, you know, on some aspects of business that I've never experienced yet. But one thing I do know is when I got around the right community, if I just shut my mouth for just a second, I use my eyes and, and I and I, I looked for who's the people out there that are doing it. And then I listen to them. The world's your library, but you don't need a library card to learn. Like it's free. Like most of these people are telling you everything out there that what it's going to take to win. But we're so caught up in pride and ego and entitlement that you get stopped. And so like, I like to take a back seat. Like I don't hold sales meetings with the guys. Like I let the guys that are, you know, if they're a little bit behind me or if they're a little bit in front of me, I, I don't care. Like, dude, I'm taking notes on everything because a, a, a fresh new perspective and a lens on a problem could be the solution that you've overlooked because sometimes it's the simple stuff. Like winning is hard enough. Let's not make it harder by having ego entitlement and stop ourselves from being a sponge because like for me out there, when I first started like with in car sales, there was people giving me advice and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Like I see, yeah, I see you, you're at 15 cars, you know, for the month. Okay, buddy. And then that first month, you know, I do like two and I'm like, ah, oh, should have listened to that guy. Burn that bridge. 
next thing you know, you know, I do seven cars and the guy who's at 20 cars is like, Hey man, listen, you got to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, yeah, okay, dude, you've been here 15 years. Okay. Yeah, dude, you know what you're doing. Okay. You're getting cheese deals. When in reality, he's just giving me the same like advice that he took that led him to be successful. Ah, burned that bridge. Next thing you know, you have no bridges to cross and you're on an island. Mm. And so if you can keep a good white belt mentality and just always be learning, there's somebody out there that's probably a little bit behind you that could teach you something in your business. And then there's obviously people in front of you that can remove roadblocks and speed bumps. And I'm just trying to get on the highway and just go as fast as I possibly can because there's only one guarantee about this. Actually, there's two of them. There's a, I'm going to pay a lot of money in taxes and I'm going to die. So. Death and taxes, <laughs> baby. Only two guarantees you get in life. Yeah. Death and fucking taxes. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, dude. So, you know, I'm trying to pay the least amount in taxes and live as long as I can, but, you know, get as far down the road as possible, you know? So then that way, when I pass the baton off to my kids, when I have them, like they're, they're miles ahead from where I started. Like, I'm not thinking about finishing the race. I'm thinking about putting my kids in scoring position so that they can finish the race. You know what, man, you said something earlier on that, that fits so well with this. And I really, really loved it. It was a, Hey, I can't coach you on a divorce. If I've never been through a divorce, I can't coach you on a bankruptcy. If I've never been through a bankruptcy and something that you just combine that with that I think is so, so powerful is, Hey, just cause they're not making as much in sales as me doesn't mean that they're not more successful than I am in a different area of life that I could be improving on because sales and business is not the only metric. You don't understand that someone could have a conversation with you and help you realize a way to handle a personal relationship that you're in your head about throughout the day, which is actually preventing you from being able to show up in close sales. And that individual, even though they're only doing, let's say five to 10 cars a month to your 20, like them fixing your fucking head and helping you get out of your way with this relationship could put you from 30 to 40. And then now all of a sudden you're like, Hey man, I'm so fucking busy. Let me hand this dude a couple of deals to pad his pockets. Cause he got me right. And now you're both winning. Dude, and That's the game. The one, the one thing I say is this. Okay. Let's say life is like driving a car. Okay. When you get a whole bunch of bugs on the windshield, which is all of the negativity in your life, it doesn't take a master technician to clean that off, it takes a windshield wiper or it takes a windshield washer to wipe the bugs off, okay? So you don't have to be the most highly decorated individual in a company to wipe the gunk off of somebody's eyes, okay? Mm. Like it takes the person who's getting paid minimum wage sometimes to just handle a very simple solution to a problem that they're proficient at. And so like I always look at it like this, like is the person giving me advice? Like is this real advice? Or is this like, you know, because some people would be like, oh, you know, you should probably do this. And it's kind of like out of pity. Or is it like, hey, listen, dude, this is exactly what you need to do to get from where you're at, solve this problem to go to where you want to go, but eliminate these roadblocks because I see them coming. Like that advice, when I get that, like, dude, I take it down, I go home, I think about it, and then I just figure out how can I emulate this in my game? Ooh, that's some game right there, man. From the real young closer himself, he's young, but he's fucking wise. He's bursting through his shirt. Looking real swole over yeah. there, but that's because he's always putting in the work, man. And <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I was so excited to have you on, Jacob, because, like, again, I've, I've had the pleasure of watching your journey. I remember seeing you get started, kind of making some waves, uh, getting out there, stirring a little bit of ruckus, doing what you do. But what I've really most enjoyed is seeing how much you really care, how much you're here to truly pour in and help and also shut up and listen when someone else is sharing and, and knowing that you're listening so that you can take it on to the next individual. You're young, but you're wise and you're here to help, man. And that's one of the greatest things that I've seen in any successful sales professional I met is a willingness to help. And you exemplify that, man. So good on you. I appreciate that, man. And there, there's a, when I was in high school, you know, um, I had a real good close friend. His name was Wes Namus. He was our quarterback. And he'd always wear some scripture on like his, his tape when he'd tape it up. And I'd always ask him like, hey, what is it? And I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but it'd be like, there's no greater honor than to lay down one's life for a brother. Like mm-hmm. there's no greater honor than to lay down one's life for a brother. And so like he'd always wear that. And I'd be like, why do you wear that? He goes, dude, because if it becomes between me, the ball, you and the guy who's trying to go get on it, he goes, I'll do anything I can to make sure that we keep possession so we can go win a game. Which I understand like it's that's football. Like that's just, this is small. But like I, I wear that one on my sleeve. I'm like, dude, there's no greater honor than to lift as I climb this world. 
Like if there's anything that I learned that helps me, if I can't pass it down, like the reason why the country is the way that it is and the state of affairs and businesses and divorces and relationships are all of the way that it is, is simply because somebody took in information and held it close to their chest and then didn't pass it. Mm. Because the only way for you to change who you are is new information allows for new actions, new actions over a long enough period of time become habit and habits make the man. And so I just want to learn as much new information as I can pass it to the people that are either behind me, around me, in front of me, and just do everything I can to make this life not about me, but about others. And if I can do that successfully, there's no way on, under, you know, God's, under God's watch can I do all of that and not live a life where when I pass away, I'm, I'm, I'm not fulfilled. Like there's no way. It's physically impossible. Like you can't do so much right and then end up with the wrong product. Just doesn't happen. Bro, you're bringing the heat today, and I am so incredibly grateful that you took the time out of your busy, busy schedule, leading rooms, changing lives, doing what you do and feel so much passion about to come in and share some of that beauty with us, my listeners, the community. Um, I've got one more question, but before I get to that question, I know the listeners are loving this, man. You have a podcast. What's it called? How can they find more of you? Where can they get more of this game? Well, so number one, it's the Young Closers podcast. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, any literal, like literally any podcasting service. You just looked up Young Closers podcast. Um, if you want to find me on Instagram, it's at the Real Young Closer, and you know my Facebook is just Jacob Hagerman. And so those are the platforms I'm most active on. And so if you want to connect, I mean, shoot me a DM. I'm I'm always responding to people and just trying to push people further. That's it. Hey man, he's a good man doing great things in this world, really extracting the greatness from himself to bring this light. And I'm honored to know you and see you continue on that journey. Now I'm going to make sure we put all that in the show notes. We're going to get you some clips so we can get that out there for you. Cause you have been an amazing guest with that said, I've got one last question. This is for the newbie. Right. Let's say someone's hearing this. They're just getting into sales. Maybe someone they know uh, that top producer has shared this show with them to help them learn and grow. Um, If you can give that new guy to the the sales industry one piece of advice on how to come out and be successful, what would it be? So the best piece of advice I give for anybody is when your skill set doesn't allow for a certain income, you have to compensate that with work ethic. And Mm -hmm. so. Right now, when you first get into the game, it'd be completely unrealistic for you to be great at it when you first walk in. So your skill is going to be down here. But if your work ethic's down here, that's where you stay. And then that's where the majority is. The uncommon minority walks in and they put in a lot of effort. They put in the extra hours. They learn. They practice. They do drill practice and rehearsing scripts, word tracks. They learn how to close. They learn how to follow up. And they get obsessed with it. We call it total immersion. And then what's going to happen is through repetition, because that's the mother of all skill, your skill set is one day going to meet your work ethic. But now here's the problem. When skill meets work ethic, most people let off the gas and they'll rely on their skill set to continue to push them over the hump. If you want to be in the top 1% of the majority, don't take your foot off the gas when your skill finally reaches that point where you can be the top producer of a company. Because you show up for one reason. You show up to either take care of your bills, take care of your family. Maybe you're living in a big purpose. Don't downplay your purpose because you're tired. Don't downplay your purpose because you just eh, don't feel like it. Show up, show up to win and be the top person because number one, it's, it's completely wrong if you have a wife, you know, girlfriend, husband, you know, boyfriend to not give them the best version of yourself when you're at home. And so it's also not right for you not to show up in a place that will give you an opportunity that is endless and then you two only half play it. Okay. Mm. So full throttle or no champagne bottle. Don't get upset when you're drinking, you know, beer. Hey, come on. Hey, I know a lot of guys live in Miller High Life and, and they, you know, they're happy with the champagne <laughs> of beer. But let's be honest, man. If you have a desire to want more out of life and you have that drive and you know in your heart of hearts that there's more for you on this planet, it is your duty to go out there and get it. And Jacob, man, bro, you are an example of exactly that. I cannot wait for you to write and release your book. I'm so excited for the listeners to check out your stories on your podcast. I'm going to need some help with that book, man. I got you, man. I'm I'm, I'm going to need some help with it. Come on, dude. I'll hit the old bat phone.
Hey, hit the bat phone. I got another book that's getting ready to drop here right in the new year. I'm literally sending it to the formatter today. So wherever this falls in the list of uh, episodes, you might be hearing about it. Call the damn leads. It's coming out to an Amazon bookshelf near you. Get it over on the website, baby. Jacob, if you want to know more, man, I will be happy to help you with your book. Hit my bat phone, dialed. We'll get you dialed in. If you're here, if you're listening... Make sure you go follow Jacob. Check out his podcast. Give him some love. Show him that you are here to learn and grow. He is doing everything in his power to pour into the sales community and really help young closers everywhere feel that same confidence. Yes, sir. I've got something. If anybody sees this episode and they shoot me a DM and says, hey, I I found you from the Call the Damn Leads podcast. What I'll do is I'll send you 16 hours of Andy live training and, you know, eight hours of you know, some of the best entrepreneurs out there, live training, this is completely free, just because you watch the podcast. And so then that way you can go from idea to action, because that's the only way that you change. And so I'll give you 16 hours of free content of just pure savagery. People paid a thousand dollars to show up to these events. And so I'll give it to you guys for free just because I love you. So shoot me a DM if you found this from this podcast. Love you guys. Hey, let's see, there's a man that knows how to bring some value to the table and truly, truly serve the community, which is what we're here for. If you guys heard the man, hit him up, slide in his DMs. Let him know you heard him on Call the Damn Leads. If you enjoyed the show, hit subscribe. Check out all our past episodes. I'm bringing in all kinds of amazing guests. We're telling all kinds of crazy ass stories to remind you that if you're in the sales industry, we are here, we are a community, and we like to have a little fun, and we also like to help each other grow. So if you have a story, go over to callthedamnleads.com forward slash podcast. Send me your information. Let's get connected. I'd love to bring you on the show. If you just like listening to it, hit subscribe, share it with your friends, tag us on social media at callthedamnleads. We appreciate it. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Later, y'all. We'll